Okay, welcome back to the second half of lesson 5.1, which is on fractions and decimals and percents. So we just finished doing very large, sorry, actually very small decimals and converting them into fractions. So now we're going to go down and we're going to go to the next step, which is how to convert a fraction to a percent. Well, we actually started this kind of a process back in grade 6 with you. And what we wanted to do is to get you to understand that a percent is a number which is out of 100. Now, if that's the case, all we have to do is figure out how do we get to 4 to 100 and then equate and create an equivalent fraction. So to get from 4 to 100, I multiplied 4 by 25. So all I have to do is multiply the 3 by the 25, and that would give me 75. So that means that since percent is out of 100, 3 quarters is 75%. Now that works really well if you can figure out how to get the, des the denominator, the 4, into a uh, uh, 100. But sometimes it doesn't always work out so well. How do you get 66.5 into 100? What do you multiply by? That becomes hard. So if there is a better way of doing it. We're going to do conversion of a fraction to a decimal, which you've already done already. And then we're going to take and multiply that by 100. So it's a two-step process. The first thing you're going to do is convert to a decimal. The second thing you're going to do then take that decimal and multiply it by 100. So let's take a look at our next step here. Well, why do I well, you should be able to figure out why I go converting to a decimal. That's easy, because the decimal is over 1. And we multiply by 100 simply to take the 0.75, which is our decimal, over 1. Now, if I want to make 0 0.75 over here um, out of 100, I have to take the denominator and multiply it by 100, but we know that whatever we do to the bottom, we have to do to the top when you're working with fractions to make equivalent fractions. So if I multiply both the 0.75 and the 1 by 100, I get 75 out of 100. That gives us our 75%. That's why we multiply it by 100. You really don't have to you know, quote that to me. All you have to be able to do is be able to do it. So let's take a look. 7 over 8 is what percent? Our first step is to convert it to a decimal, something you've already done, but let's go with with it anyway. Zero, sorry, 7 divided by 8. When you do that, you get 0 0.875. Now this is out of 1. So in order to get this to become out of 100, I'm going to multiply both the top and the bottom by 100. Well, the bottom's going to become out of 100, and every decimal, every percent out of 100. So we really can, you can put that in if you wanted to, or you could leave it out. But this becomes 87.5 over 100, which means we have, which means we have 87.5 percent. So what do you have to show me? Well, you don't have to show me all this stuff. What you have to show me is 0 0.875 times 100. That gives me 87. 0.5%. Because we know percent is out of 100, you don't have to put the out of 100 in it. The definition of percent is already telling you that. Let's take a look at another one here. I've got 13 over 20. What percent is that? Well, first, we convert it to a decimal. And 13, when you divide it by 100, sorry, by 20, gives you 0 0.65. And then 0 0.65 times that by 100, you move the decimal two places when you multiply by 100, gives us 65%. So there's how we do it. Now how I'm going to mark this, you, all, you know that it's what you did, what you got, what you did, and what you got. So this question would be at either 4 or either half a mark for each one for 2. All right. Derek received a mark of 7 out of 35 on his math test. What percent is this? Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of a head start. Most times we write... 7 out of 35 like that. What I'd like you to do is to finish the question. What percent did poor Derek get on this test? All right. So I'm going to convert it to a decimal first. So 7 divided by 35 is equal to 0 0.2. And 0 0.2 multiplied by 100 is 20%. It's a word problem. So Derek received 20%. I think I'm supposed to have my I before E, except after C screw up there. Um, Derek received 20% on his test. Okay. So let's move on to the next one. It's 217 kilometers from Sedgwick to Bob's farm near Edmonton. 
Bob has driven 144 kilometers on his way to the farm. What percent of the distance has he traveled so far? Rounding your decimal to the nearest one, sorry, to the nearest percent. So the first thing we have to do is write it as a fraction. Well, he's gone 144 kilometers out of the 217. So there's my fraction. Now, let's convert this to a decimal. Well, 114, sorry, 144 divided by 217 gives us 0 0.6635944767. All right. And to convert that to a percent, we can multiply it by 100. Now, this I'm going to stop right here for a second. Don't start rounding this off before you do the multiplying by 100. But the easiest way to do this is to put this into your calculator, 144 divided by 217. Your calculator is going to display this. Okay? So write down the first three or four digits and put dot, dot, dot after it. And then, using your calculator, you're going to find that you're going to do the multiplication. So go 0 0.66359 times 100. That gives us 66.359. And that's a percent now. Now our question says to round it to the nearest percent. If it did not say that, we would have to have had enough digits here to round it to the nearest hundredth. So you have to keep enough to do that. And if you notice here, I've got one, two, three, four, five of them in my uh, number here that gives me just enough to round a five up to a six. So if I had to round it to a, a the nearest 100, it would be 66.36%. So I have to include at least that much when I write it down. Now, in this question, it says to the nearest hundredths, sorry, to the nearest percent. So our cutoff is basically right here. The 3 does not cause the 6 to go up, so we get 66% of the way to the farm. Now remember, percent is your unit, so it has to be included just like meters and centimeters. All right, here's one for you. 3 over 400. Pause the recording and uh, do this one. Note that this percent is going to be less than 1%. All right, so... How do we do this? Same way as we did all the rest of them. 3 divided by 400. When you do 3 divided by 400, you can get 0 0.0075. And 0 0.0075 multiply that by 100 gives me 0 0.75. Now, don't be fooled. This is not a decimal. Because it's been multiplied by 100, this is a percent. It's just a percent, which is less than 1. All right, so there is your answer. Let's try another example. There you go. Try this one. 7 over 823. Pause the recording and do it. Okay. So, first thing, 7 divided by 823. That gives us 0 0.00850. All right. Now, it doesn't tell you what to uh, round it to, so we're going to assume it's the nearest hundredth or two decimal places after the de decimal. Converting this to a decimal, it's going to be 0 0.0085. I guess it is a zero there, isn't it? 8505 dot 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 times 100 is going to give me 0 0.85. And of course, it's 0, 5. So the round off is right here. The 0 does not change the 5. So your answer is going to be uh, 0.85%. Okay? So I think I've got things in the wrong places here. This should have been, I guess this part here should have been down here. And this part should have been right there. Okay, so 0.85%. Here's another one, a little bit bigger to work with. 13 over 22,345. Pause the recording and do that one. All right, so 13. Okay, that was interesting. Go back up here. Uh, there we are. So I have 13 divided by 2, 2, 3, 4, 5, and that equals 0 0.0005817. Now take that 0 0.0005817, multiply it by 100, and that gives you 0. 0.58%. Now, um, 
this statement here is only to help you remember not to use these numbers here when you're doing your rounding, okay? It's, it says that leading zeros do not count in rounding. In, in pure mathematical terms, that's 100% wrong. They do count. If you want to round at the nearest tenth, the nearest hundredth, you have to use the leading zeros. But I want you to, allow, to learn to round to keep some numbers there. Otherwise, these small percents would all round to zero, and of course, that wouldn't be helpful to us. So we're going to be using the rule that you go to the first two non-zero digits, like that, and then use the set, the one here, to find out if the eight changes. All right, so there you go, 0 0.058. Again, my unit is percent. Now, Bob had another test. Well, maybe he's competing with Derek. Bob received a mark of 7 out of 1,235 marks on this math test. What percent is this? Let's have you pause the recording and complete this one in its entirety, please. Okay, so first we have a fraction, seven marks out of one, two, three, five. Now convert it to a decimal. Seven divided by one, two, three, five. When you divide seven by one, two, three, five, you get zero point zero zero five six six eight zero one six. And you want to be able to keep at least, you know, enough digits to round, so you're gonna to have to keep at least that many digits in here. So I'm going to multiply by 100, so I have 0 0.005668 times 100 gives me 0 0.568. All right. Uh, wait a minute, it's 5668. Just caught that little error. All right. So now I've got this stuff here all written out. I need to do to here, so I didn't really need the 8. But the 6 causes that 6 to go up, so our answer is 0.57%. So I don't know who the math teacher is who gives you 1,235 marks on a test, but whoever he is, he's not very nice. All right. Now, what about stuff like this, where Bob receives a mark of 12 out of 9 on his PE test. He got 100%, but then he got the bonus question correct. So theoretically, what percent did he get? Try that one you're going to notice that this one's going to be over 100%. All right. Well, 12 marks out of 9. Remember, it has to be written this way because he received more marks than were on the test. So the 12 is greater than 9, and that's what has to be. When you do your dividing, 12 divided by 9, you're going to notice right off the bat that you're going to get a 1 out front. You get 1.3333. All right. Now, 1.3 repeating times 100% is going to give me 133.333%. Cutting this off, it doesn't say uh, what percentage to round it to, so two decimal places, he received 133.33%. Note that this third th three there does not count as that three to go up, so it just c cuts off at 33. So there you go. Now, converting fractions, sorry, percents to fractions now. Um, percents to fractions is, is, is uh, not as difficult as it sounds because everything in a percent is out of 100. So it means that regardless of what happens, your denominator is going to be 100. So if you have 20%, by its definition of being a percent, that means it's 20 over 100. So now you just divide the top and the bottom by the same number. In this case, it's going to be 20. And that's going to give you 1 over 5. All right. So the moment you go from percent to a fraction, it's very straightforward. So here we go. Bob received 40% on his math test. What fraction of the questions did he get correct? Pause the, question. Pause the recording and try this question. All right. So writing into a fraction out of 100, you got 40%. 40% is 40 out of 100, always. Now, reduce it to the lowest, to the lowest form, 40 divided by 100. Well, I'm going to divide this by 10 because I see that both end in 0. That gives me 4 out of 10. Then I can divide by 2s. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Now, if you notice that 20 goes into both 40 and 100, you could have done uh, reducing by dividing by 20 in one step. So Bob got 2 out of every, two out of every 5 questions correct. Okay. Now, this is kind of a trick question. 
I want you to write the following percents as a fraction with a denominator of 100 percent. I'll start with 100. Try that. All right. Believe it or not, you should be done. Percent is out of 100. In fact, uh, if you take a look at the percent sign, all right, just give you a second here to put the paper down. If you take a look at the percent sign, it's basically a 1, all right, and it's got a 0 and a 0 there. So percent is out of, uh, I'm supposed to explode this. Give me a second here. Oh, it won't let me do this. If I can ungroup it. There we go. Yeah, all right. So take the 1 out and the 100. Straighten this up. And the percent sign becomes 100. So whenever you're dealing with percent, it's out of 100. So this becomes 24 over 100. This becomes 16 over 100. And this becomes 76 over 100. All right. Now, sometimes percents are greater than 100%. We ran into that a minute ago with the bonus question. But when we had fractions where a person got uh, 12 out of 9. So let's take a look at percentages where a percentage is more than 100%. So think of getting a bonus on a test. That's probably the easiest way to do it. So how do we do this? Well, it's exactly the same thing. Because since percent means out of 100, this is 104 out of 100. And then you reduce it. 125 percent, that's 125 out of 100. Then you reduce it and write them as mixed fractions if they're requested for. So let's take a look at this one here. 145 percent, that's 145 out of 100. Um, I'm not sure why I have a 4 out of 5 stuck there, but uh, check my notes here. It's not in my notes. Somehow we had typo there. So don't worry about this. So to reduce this, um, take and divide both of these by 5. And 145 would be 29 and over 20. And I'm, I did the math in my head, so hopefully I'm correct. All right, now if I wanted to convert this into a mixed fraction, that's 1 and 9 twentieths. So you, better, you might want to grab your calculator and double check that 145 divided by 9 is actually 29. Okay, you can also get small percents percents which are decimals. Now, 0.5% means it's actually 0.5 out of 100. So we have to put a decimal temporarily into our fraction. You can't have a decimal in a fraction, so we've got to fix that. In order to fix that, I've got to get rid of the decimal that's here. The easiest way to do that is to do the same thing to the top and the bottom to get rid of the 0.5. Well, I'm going to multiply 0.5 by 10. That will give me 5. And I'm going to multiply 100 also by 10 because I'm making equivalent fractions. I have to do the same thing to both the numerator and the denominator. Well, 100 times that gives me 1,000. And, of course, now you can reduce it to be 1 over 200. I guess that's all down here. All right. So let's have you try the next one on the next page. All right. Um, oh, sorry. There's also another way of doing this, too, if you wanted to. Um, we can just take the 0.5 and the 100 and convert everything into a decimal and then use our skills for decimals to actually change the answer back into a, uh, a simple fraction. So let's take a look at this. So I've got 0 0.5 divided by 100. That gives me 0 0.005. All right. Now, 0 0.005, this is, remember, 1, 0, 0, 0, so it's over 1,000. And that's 5 over 1,000. And, of course, you can reduce this by dividing by 5 on both cases. And, of course, that gives you 1 over 200, just like we did on the previous page. Now, you can do it either way. It's up. You're welcome to use either method. So here's point 0.12. Try this one. And you, can, you can use either method you want. All right, so we've got 0 0.12 over 100. I need to get this to be a non-decimal, so I'm going to multiply it by 100. That will give me 12. 
multiply this by 100, I get 10000, so I get 10,000. Now, you do 10, 12 over 10,000, you can divide both of these by 4, and that will give you 3 over 2,500. Okay, so now let's go from decimals to percent conversion. A decimal to a percent is actually probably one of the easiest ones to do because previously when we went from fractions to percent this was one of the steps that we used so how do we go from a decimal to a percent you simply multiply by 100 so for this 0 0.25 I just take 0 0.25 multiply it by 100 because it's at a percent and I'll get percent so I'll do the first one with you 1.3 times 100 is equal to 130 percent simple as that. Now these are percents way above one, 100. These are you know, uh, big ones. So what is 35 as a percent? Well, take 35. It's the decimal. You don't usually see the decimal portion, but it's still there. And multiply it by 100. That gives you 35, 0, 0. And that's a percent. 35, 100 percent. Okay, let's go the other way. What if you had 0 0.0045? So pause the recording and turn that number into a per, uh, that decimal into a percent. All right. So 0 0.00045 multiplied by 100. The decimal is going to move two places because there's two zeros there. That means my answer is going to be 0 0.045. Now you can divide it out if you wish. Now remember, 0 0.045 is a percent. There you go. Let's try a word problem. Josh received 47 out of 59 in his test. Marcy received, or sorry, stated that she received 80% on her test. Who received the higher mark and by how much percent? Now, because it says by how many percent here, how many, I have to convert Josh's mark into a percent so I can compare it to Marcy. So let's take a look. I kind of gave it away, but let's go through it anyway. We got 47 over 59. That's my fraction part. To get this into a decimal, I'm sorry, percent, I'm going to divide it by 59. And 47 divided by 59 in this case is 0 0.7966101. Now I need to convert that into a percent. So 0 0.7966101 times 100 means I got 79.66101 percent. So I'm going to cut this off. And that's going to be 79.66%. Now, you'll notice that I made sure that I kept a couple of decimal places here. Because if I round it off, Marcy and Josh have the same mark. But Marcy got 80%. Josh got less than 80%, but not by much. So Marcy received the higher mark. So how much higher was your mark? Well, now we have to figure out what we're going to do here. How much higher is the key words for subtraction? So Marcy got 80, and Josh got 79.66 approximately, because we rounded it off. When you do the actual math, it's going to be 0.34. Now remember, this is a percent also, because we're taking the difference between two percents. So her mark was 0.34% higher than Josh's. Okay. Here's what I want you to do. Bob scored 78 out of 115 on his test. Frank scored 31 out of 45 on his test. Which student scored better? How do you know? And what assumptions do you make? So have pause the recording and uh, give that one a whirl. OK. So let's start with Bob. We have 78 out of 115. So it becomes 78 divided by 115. When you do the math on that one, you get 0 0.67828, okay? So now 0 0.6782, uh, 6782602, or 608, I guess, times 100 means that he got 67 point. I'm going to cut this off right here. And the 6 will cause the 3 to go up, so I'll have 67.83. Getting a little messy there. Now let's take a look at Frank. All right. So Frank <coughs> uh, 
Frank scores, um, where are we at here, 31 out of 45. So that's 31 divided by 45, and that gives you 0 0.68888. All right, now I'm multiplying that by 100. It means that Frank got 68.888%. Now rounding this one off, it means 68.8. So, the question here says, who scored better? Well, you'll see here that Frank scored better. Not by much, but he did score better. Now, I think on the next page here, you're going to find the question, what did we assume? I'm going to answer that question on here, and then I'll put the answer on the next page here. Um, first off, if you're going to compare two people on a test, and you want to figure out who did better, several things have to take place. One, we assume the tests were on the same subject. It would no, be no good to test Frank on science and Bob on spelling. We also assume that they're in the same grade. We're also assuming that Bob and Frank um, are writing the same test at the same time, on the same day. Uh, we're also assuming that the tests are equally um, equivalent in terms of their difficulty. These are all things that we take for granted when we do something like this. So what do we assume? Um, same grade, subject, difficulty, and there's three other things that we can do. Okay, the last thing we're going to do is what's called using grids. Now, to use a grid, this is uh, a 100 chart, but you'll notice that this 100 chart is a little bit different. Whenever we did 100 charts before, we never had half of an individual square. We always had uh, you know, like 66 or 67. We never had 66 and a half. So taking a look at this one, what percent is shaded? Well, remember, this is 100 square. So this is 10 by 10, which means you've got 100 squares to begin with. So we know that whatever the count is, that's going to be out of 100. So we can count them. Now, you don't have to count every individual square because it's a 10 by 10 grid. That means this is 10. This is another 10, and this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, and a half. Okay? So in this case, we have 24.5. So 24.5 boxes out of 100 is 24.5%. What is this as a decimal and a fraction? Well, since all percents are divided out of 100, all we have to do is take the 24.5 and divide it by 100. And that will give us 0 0.245. So there's your decimal. Now, convert the decimal to fraction, or if you want, you can convert the, fraction, the percent to a fraction. It doesn't matter how you do it. If you want to do the percent to fraction, it's going to be 200, so 24.5 out of 100. And of course, you're going to have to take this 24.5 and get rid of this decimal by multiplying both by 10. So that means we have 245 over 1,000. If you want to do it the other way, we have 0 0.245. We can put the, the 1 under the 0 and add zeros there. And that, of course, also gives us 245 over 1,000. And now, in both these cases, you want to reduce it. And you can reduce both by dividing by 5. And that gives you 49 over 200. And also, on this side, you also get 49 over 200. All right. So let's turn the page. I'd like you to try the last one here. So pause the recording and do this one. All right, welcome back. So I'm just going to skip count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And I've got one, two, three. Now this one, if you look at it, is just a quarter of it. So this is 61, 62, 63.25. So you got to be careful. But it's easy to count if you skip count. All right, so since all percents are out of 100, to change this into a decimal, um, you should have taken 63.25, divided that by 100, and that will give you 0 0.6325. Okay? And this type of a question, you can round it or you can leave it, but most cases, 
we probably would just leave that. Now, converting the decimal to a fraction, I'm going to do the decimal portion where I just keep adding, put the numerator under it. So there's my one, one, two, three, four, and then I'm going to ignore this part right here. So my answer starts out with 6,325 over 10,000. And I can do the reducing on this one, and that will give me 253 over 400. Okay, so we've finished the second half of 5.1, so now what we're going to do is we'll give you the, the next questions in the assignment, okay? So, sorry, in the classroom. So your teacher will give you the remainder of the questions for this lesson. Have a great day, and we will see you in the next lesson.